Greetings and a... Artificially enhanced salutations. <laughs> Welcome to Tech 3D. My name is Neil Cross, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at all the ways I can make myself obsolete by using artificial intelligence to see if it can do my job for me. Because unless uh, you've been stuffed in a box for the last 12 months, you've probably heard of ChatGPT by this point. I made a video on it a few weeks ago as well, uh, but it's all over the place. It's like one of the most Googled terms at the moment, which is, <laughs> which is a bit ironic. But um, it's what well, it's the chatbot that's so good it can pass the bar exam within the legal profession. And I've seen various creators use it to write video scripts for their own channels, because it's that accurate. And I thought, all right, well, okay, right, let's see if we can write a tutorial for Autodesk Inventor then. And uh, let's see how accurate it is. I was thinking about kind of doing it and then delivering the tutorial, but I thought, I mean, I'm, I would have to, I'd say it was an AI done script in the first place, and then like, it, you know, spoilers are gone. So um, I just thought, well, we'll do it, and we'll see what it comes out with and how accurate it is. And uh, let's, re let's read over it. So let's hop on over to GPT. Now, I must prefer, I'm not an expert on all the different models. You've got OpenAI's main page, where the playground is in this one. I think this is GPT-3. Data set's around three years old. Doesn't reference the internet. But you've also got Bing, which has GPT, maybe GPT-4 infused into it. Does reference the internet. It's got various different styles of conversation that you can have with it. And then there's also a Bing bar on the right-hand side, which I don't, I just don't know. What, what, is this a different engine to this, different model? I, I don't. I just don't know, and I I, I can't use them all. I, or else I'll be reading three scripts, and we'll be it'll take forever. So I thought we'll use the the OG GPT, and let's just keep this simple. Like write me a YouTube video script done in the style of. It's not going to know who I am, but let's just give it a shot from the Tech Three D YouTube channel. Right. So we'll say the video will be a beginner's tutorial for how to use the extrude, should we, should we use extrude? Yeah, the extrude command, let's keep it simple. Uh, in Autodesk Inventor 2023, just to make sure it's actually, if it's a three year old data set, I uh, just, just say Autodesk Inventor. Uh, in Autodesk Inventor, uh, make the video uh, witty and funny with lots of jokes and make the, the talking no longer, I'd say four minutes. So it doesn't just type for ages. Uh, give it a catchy intro and ending. And I should see what it does. Uh, I have no idea at this point. Hey there, Tech 3D fan fanatics. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know what that is. All right. So, I mean, I was scanning that as it was typing it out. It is, this is very short. I don't think this is four minutes long. But hey there, Tech 3D fanatics. <laughs> Hands up, who's a fanatic? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something that will make your life in Autodesk Inventor so much easier. We're going to dive into the world of extrusions. And before you ask, no, it's not a new fitness trend. It's a fundamental tool in your Inventor toolbox that you don't want to miss. Pretty sure nobody's missing this. It's the first thing you get taught in the course. It's the first button. Anyway, so anyway, let's get started with basics, mate. Extrude command allows you to take a 2D shape and push or pull it into a 3D object. Think of it like a magical button that transforms your flat shapes into stunning 3D masterpieces. I mean, there's overselling it and then there's overselling it. And the best part is it's easy to use. I mean, that bit's true. Let's start with the sketching process. Okay, yes, we do begin by creating a 2D sketch of the object that you want to extrude. So in a video, you'll probably, probably sketch out a square or a hexagon or something. Uh, it could be anything from a simple rectangle to a complex logo. Mm, I suppose, yeah. Just, just remember, the better your sketch, the better your extrusion will turn out. I suppose, okay, fine. And uh, now that we have our sketch, select the extrude command from the toolbar. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Does it sound scary, though? Uh, the extrude command will prompt you to select the sketch you just created. Well, it doesn't. It prompts you to... It, it it asks you to pick a sketch, not the one you just... But anyway, then, then simply pull or push the sketch in the direction you want. To, that'll be the little arrow. This will then create a 3D object from your 2D sketch. Voila! It's something I've never said. But wait, there's more! Uh, you can also modify the extrusion by adding drafts, fillets, and chamfers to make your design stand out. Um, yeah, but that's nothing to do with the extrude command, though, is it? So, there you have it, folks. Uh, the extrude command is a fundamental tool in Inventor Toolbox that will help you transform your flat designs into draw-dropping 3D objects. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a bit, I mean, it's a bit bare-bones, that. Anyway, let's, let's hop on over. I mean, let's just give Bing a shot and see what happens. We'll just paste the exact same thing. Let's make this creative and see what Bing comes out with. Uh, this one apparently does reference the internet, so it, oh, it really does reference the internet. So it is looking me up. Well, this will be interesting. What's it gonna? What, what, what's it gonna give me? Uh, how's this? How's this gonna start? Hey guys, welcome back. So yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm Neil Cross, Autodesk expert, elite, and certified professional. Well, I'm not a certified professional anymore. I've, I've neglected to take that exam for a long time because it's 
long story. And uh, right, well, this is a lot more detailed than the first GPT model. Let's wait for this to finish, and then we'll, we'll have a glaze over this one. Right, so we've got two AI models with the same prompt with massively different results. And this one just seems to have cut itself off at the end. Uh, but it referenced Pluralsight, and to my knowledge, I am... I think the only creator on Pluralsight that's made a course, I think. So it's referenced my own material, <laughs> um, which uh, I, did, I, mean, I don't think actually I made a tutorial for a extrude on, never mind. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech3D, the channel for the engineering design professional. I'm Neil Cross, expert elite, certified professional, not true. And today I'm going to show you how to use the extrude command in Autodesk Inventor. This is a beginner's tutorial though, mate. So don't worry if you're new to Inventor, I'll give you a guide through the basics and make it fun and easy. And if you're an experienced user, mate, stick around. You might learn something new or just enjoy watching me mess around with Inventor. Uh, the extrude command is one of the most fundamental the versatile tools in Inventor. It allows you to create 3D shapes from 2D sketches by adding or removing material along a direction. You can use it to create simple blocks, cylinders, cones, or more comp what well, you wouldn't make a cone with it, or more complex shapes like gears, pipes, or even a dragon. Y yes, a dragon. I'll show you how I'm not, I'm not gonna show you how to make a dragon. Uh, you can't extrude a dragon. That's just, that's not possible. But first, let's start with something simple. Let's create a new part file and start on the sketching on the X, Y, wow. Okay, we're going that granular. I'm going to draw a rectangle and use the rectangle tool on the sketch tab. You can use, you can also use the shortcut R on your keyboard. I'm going to make a 100 mil by 50 mil by typing in the dimensions and hitting enter. You can also use constraints and dimensions to control the size and position of your sketch. That sounds exactly like something I've said already. Now that we've, now that we've got our sketch, we can use the extrude command to turn it into a 3D shape. You can find the extrude command on the 3D model tab or use the shortcut E on your, wow, okay. This is terrifying. Uh, what? The last option you have is to change the operation of the extrusion from joint to cut or intersect. Join will add material to your part, cut will remove material from your part, and intersect will only... What's this referencing? Let's find out. It, all right, so it did reference me. What's this? Is this a specific video it's looked at? It really has looked at my own. Wow, that is frightening. It's, t it's taken my one hour test drive video from only three years ago, and, and it's infused what I what I probably said into this. That's both amazing, but also a bit a bit terrifying at the same time. Uh, I, I don't know why it kind of stopped. I don't know if there's a limit on how many characters Bing can spit out, but I did, I mean, four minutes long, it should take me more than four minutes to say all that. Uh, but mate, I, that's, where, that's where we're at with AI. I mean, it knows everything. It's got some stuff a bit wrong, right? You're not going to extrude dragons, right? You probably wouldn't even use it for, I mean, gears maybe, but like pipes. No, you'd sweep a pipe, right? Uh, and now I'm going to use the extrude command again. This time I'm going to change the operation from joint to cut. I mean, it's going specifically into these different buttons within extrude, joint, cut, right? Intersect and new body. It's probably got new body in here somewhere if it would have done if it kept on going. I mean, that's actually frightening. So yeah, chat GPT, uh, <laughs> making me obsolete every uh, a day at a time. I mean, maybe I could make like an iLogic, my first ever iLogic tutorial through chat GPT. Who knows? If you want to see that, mate, get subscribed because uh, I'll be learning at the same time as you. <laughs> I will use iLogic. Anyway, mate, yeah, GPT, if, if you've if you've not jumped on it, just it, you can't just go to the Bing site. You've got to be in, invited onto the, the beta beta to, to use that. But OpenAI's Chat GPT is kind of free to a point for everyone uh, to mess around with. So right, let's give it a shot, mate. Jump on the bandwagon because it's it's gonna be it's gonna be everywhere soon, like literally everywhere soon. But thanks for watching. Um, I thought that was just a bit, a bit interesting. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Toodles.